Hello, my name is Denise Duggan. I'm a senior speech and language therapist with the Community Neuro Rehab Team uh, based in County Donegal. My colleague here, Fiona O'Loughlin, is the senior occupational therapist on the team. Uh, unfortunately, our colleague, Dr. Mark Hogan, who is the clinical lead and our clinical neuropsychologist, was unable to be here today. Uh, so it takes two of us to fill Mark's shoes here today. Um, I suppose what we're going to do is give you a little bit of background to the Community Neuro Rehab Team. Um, how it was set up and why it was set up. And then Fiona's going to follow up through then of the challenges and opportunities that has, that has presented to us over the last two years. Um, I suppose from a little bit of the background, uh, we noted in Donegal that there was an increasing need for specialist interdisciplinary intervention for clients with complex neurological conditions. Uh, Donegal is a relatively high in incidence of neurological conditions, in particular multiple cirrhosis. There was a need to establish an effective, coordinated service. And services in the community were noted to be very fragmented, with little of any coordination. And I suppose this tied very nicely into the National HSE framework, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, the National Policy and Strategy for the Provision of Neuro Rehabilita Rehabilitation Services for People in Ireland, 2011 to 2015. And I suppose they noted um, what we noted in Donegal, it was something that was actually across the whole country. Uh, there was nearly three quarters of a million people in Ireland today are affected by some neurological condition and or uh, a significant phys physical disability, um, and that affects them in their everyday lives. And I suppose to even to quote from the, the actual uh, policy, um, it, was well, sorry, it was well established and acknowledged that historically neurorehabilitation services had been underdeveloped and where they existed had been developed in an ad hoc manner, primarily by the voluntary sector. Where services had been developed by the statutory health system, the focus of provision had been on medical rehabilitation, which, while most important, is not comprehensive. It is also a feature of current provision that many of the services and service structures are condition specific and access to some also determined by reference to age within the adult cohort. So at an individual level, the impact of not receiving appropriate and timely services and support can include deterioration in function and the associated physical and psychological sequelae of that. At a system level, it can lead to increased hospital admissions and delayed discharges with many of the early advances negated by the absence of downstream services. So I suppose when you, when you think of that, you think, why was there not a coordinated service within, within the health service? And what they looked at was looking at setting up community neurological teams. And we were chosen to be a learning site for two years. Um, we opened our doors in uh, April 2015. Um, and it's been a learning curve. Certainly the word learning comes, comes to the fore. Uh, it's certainly been a learning curve over the last two years for all of us. So the community neuro rehabilitation team will be developed from existing community-based therapy staff to provide moderate to high intensity neuro rehabilitation inputs and to enable activity and participation in the community settings across home, education, work and social environments. The CNRTs will provide specialist neuro rehabilitation therapy services. So what will we do? CNRTs will form a critical link in the care pathway by facilitating early discharge and co continuity of therapy from acute and regional inpatient neurorehabilitation uh, faculties. Accessing and making recommendations on vocational options, such as returning to work, education, and, op and occupational activities. Supporting primary care teams through advice, consultation, and shared care approaches to assessment and intervention. The big ask. The CNRT is a HSC layered service for people with neurological conditions who are living in the community. It plans to provide specialist assessment, education, advice, information, rehabilitation, treatment, and support to the person, their families, and their carers. So what the, the, the previous um, policy would have noted in their research throughout the country was that 
People were leaving hospital, people post-diagnosis were being sent on primary care waiting lists. And I'm sure many of you here probably are from primary care and dealing with primary care, and you realise that it's waiting list heavy. It's about getting people in and getting people out. There's not a chance to go off and do a lot of extra training and, and, and upskill yourself. And that was noted throughout the country. What we were noticing in Donegal was replicated throughout the, throughout the country. Um, so again, people with uh, a neurological condition were not going to a specialist service, they were going to a generalist service. They were getting maybe three, four appointments in a block, were sent off for six months. There was no coordination between what, they were, what was happening in the community and what was linking back into the hospital, linking back into neurology. Um, there was very little communication, so there definitely needed to be changes, and that, that's, for, that's for sure. Um, so we are actually a two-day-a-week service. We, we, we're all together on two days. Um, so we're based in Ballabafay. Um, and again, as any of you know the geography of Donegal, it's a very big county. Um, so again, Fiona will talk about the challenges later on, and that's one of the challenges that we're, we're based in one particular place and people have to travel. So who are our team members? As I said earlier, Dr. Mark Hogan is our senior clinical neuropsychologist. Myself, I'm a senior speech and language therapist. Again, one of our big hurdles that we've had over the last while, where we did have a senior physiotherapist in place when we started, unfortunately that place is now vacant. Um, and Fiona will talk later who's our senior occupational therapist. But we link very closely with the key workers, the key workers on the ground. Um, the ABI key workers, uh, the physical and sensory key workers. We have a discharge coordinator who are, um, organises the discharges from the acute services into the community service, which is very helpful. And very importantly, when we're here today, we have our MS key workers, Charlie McLaughlin and Catherine Peoples, who we work very closely with. And we're very lucky that they're actually on site in our building as well, which, which certainly helps. But none of this would all happen without the support of our admin support, Gerlene McManaman, and I'm sure in MS Society many of you know Gerlene and the good work that she does. And um, very recently as well, we've also had access to an adult social worker, and we find that very beneficial with some of the clients that we're actually dealing with. Team capacity obviously has fluctuated, as I've said. Uh, I'm currently working at a 0.4, so I work two days a week. Our physiotherapy is a 0.5, which is currently vacant. The occupational therapist is a 0.5, and our psychologist is a 0.5. So we, ha we don't have a huge amount of time to do the work we want to do, but we have come out of existing services. There's been no uh, development posts to cover the CNRT. So what does the service provide? Team-based specialist ass assessment of the client's current needs. The treatment plans to include advice to family cares, rehabilitative goal setting with the client in, a collaborative, in collaboration with the team, Rehabilitation programs, depending on the client's need, will include at least two disciplines from within the team services. So again, the services are psychology, occupational therapy, speech therapy and physio. We do this in consultation with the key workers that are involved with the client. Regarding the current, and we do this regarding their current caseload, and we discuss potential CNRT client referrals. We currently have estimated between 100 and 150 cases per year that we're seeing. Training for physical and sensory respite staff, day service staff, support workers with the voluntary agencies, and any other rent, residential and nursing home staff. So how do you get into the CNRT? You need to be between 18 and 65 years, resident of County Donegal, a diagnosis or a working diagnosis of a neurological condition, including uh, traumatic brain injury, stroke, multiple cirrhosis, Parkinson's, spina, uh, sp uh, spina bifida, CP, etc. We do exclude dementia and alcohol-related brain injury. You need to present with multiple needs that requires interdisciplinary team input. So if you're a person with MS who just requires speech therapy and you don't require any other service, you can be seen within the primary care team. However, if your needs are over two services, so for example you need neuropsychology and speech and language therapy, you can't access the service. We're trying to keep it to the more complex because otherwise we, on a two-day service we would not be able to cope. So we're trying to get to, to kind of get, see the people that have more complex needs within the community. And the person needs to have the ability to engage and benefit from the rehabilitative process. 
The referral pathway, we have a specific referral form. Referrals are accepted from key workers, GPs, consultants, hospital and inpatient settings, hospital and community-based allied health professionals, voluntary services and self-referral. To date, the majority of our referrals are coming from the key worker service because they're the people that actually know the people on the ground and what their needs currently are. So the stages in the referral. The referral is discussed at an interdisciplinary team level. Their consent is obtained and then we source the relevant medical records. Key worker support is initially offered. So if it's a new referral coming into the service, we get the key worker, we, we ask the key worker to go out and uh, to meet the client. Um, now, very often the key workers may already be involved in the client, with the client previously, um, or this may be a new person to the key worker as well. So they'll identify the need on the ground, and from that information we can prioritise the client, whether we need to see them very, very quickly, or we can, so whether they're a P1, P2, or P3, basically. Um, and then from that information, we can decide which two members of the team are best placed to meet that client for an, inter, uh, an interdisciplinary assessment. So the assessment process. Depending on the information gathered, initial interview has been offered. Two team members conduct the initial interview with a client and a family member. We always ask for a family member to come along. The interview comprises of a comprehensive specialist assessment of the client's current level of functioning. That can take up to an hour and a half per session, and that can take up to two sessions. We really get to know the client. We really get to know the client's needs, the background to the client, what the client was like prior to their diagnosis, what interests them. We really, their family, their makeup of their family, we really get to know the client very well. And this is for me as a speech and language therapist working on the ground. To me, this is what made the difference for me working in primary care, where you went in, you did your battery of speech assessments or whatever, and you only really worked with the client, the needs that you saw. You didn't get to know the client, and that to me was one of the biggest differences that, that I would have noted within, within the service. Um, so recommendations are made on the findings of the interview. So the typical outcomes from that assessment, um, it's usually four. Uh, so it could be no immediate intervention needs. We may ask just for key worker support and monitoring. We may make a referral to generic community-based services. And this would usually be maybe if a person had not access to transport or weren't willing to make the journey or unable to make the journey. Um, we are centre-based. We can offer domiciliary visits. Um, but obviously a two-day service with the geography of Donegal, it's not possible to do that for, for a lot of clients, but in exceptional circumstances we can do that. Um, but the most common outcome from the assessment is the fourth one. So it's be a specialist, goal-focused rehabilitation plan provided by the team. Our aims are to optimise recovery and function, build awareness, facilitate an adjustment, both functional and emotional facilitating community integration, promoting quality of life, and I think a big one, and one that certainly has is, is, is been very helpful for a lot of the people we see, is family understanding. So the framework of the intervention we provide, interdisciplinary team goal setting and collaboration of the client. Because we are time limited, we need to focus on the goals. We need to identify the goals early in treatment and focus on those goals. Provide a framework to help the individual understand their needs and challenges. Provide a holistic rehabilitation. So what I mean by that is sometimes I'm seeing a client um, from, from a, a communication perspective and I realise that their anxiety is much bigger than their, their, their communication difficulty. So I can kind of pause that therapy and ask maybe our psychologist to take over for a number of sessions and then maybe that client will come back at a later stage. So the client is getting their therapy where they actually need it at the time. We can offer individual and group sessions. As I said earlier, it's time limited intervention. Facilitation of a gradual return to primary care services. And actually that's happening a lot less than we had initially planned when we started out. We thought we would be referring a lot back to the community. But I think that's coming from the goal-centered approach. The person comes in, identifies their goals and works on them. And very often we're actually discharging them back to the key workers again. We're not actually making those onward referrals. Well, I'm not, anyway, from a speech perspective, making those onward referrals back to the community as I thought I would be. Uh, liaison with services to facilitate that transition if it's happening. 
and then review as appropriate. So specific specialist interdisciplinary intervention that we can provide. Awareness building, emotional behaviour support and adjustment, driving assessment and advice, speech language communication assessment, treatment and advice, swallow assessment and advice, vocational rehabilitation, physical and functional rehabilitation, cognitive assessment and rehabilitation and consultation. So our discharge process, I'm nearly finished. So we have an interdisciplinary discharge report so that we all put input into when the person is completely leaving the service. As I said earlier, we may have onward referral to communi community-based services or ongoing key worker support. For some of the more complex cases, we do keep them on our books uh, and we have quarterly review over a year period. Anybody that has been discharged from the service can be reviewed if their, circum if their circumstances change. Um, so I suppose, look, and if you want to talk about the obstacles, but some of the obstacles we would notice that we have no onward discharges from neuropsychology and neuro OT because there's not their counterparts in the community, and that's one of the challenges that we're up against. Um, I talked about my referrals from SLT. Uh, what we're trying to do, I suppose, is lessen the demands on the primary care teams. So um, I'm going to hand you over to Fiona. I suppose at the minute we're undergoing our. Um, I suppose consultation process of looking at how effective we've been, what we have done, what we haven't done. Um, we're looking at our numbers and Fiona will discuss the, the demographics and we're looking at client feedback. Uh, next month we're all meeting heads of services. Um, so as I say, we're, we're looking at whether we will be able to go forward from here. But we'll be quite hopeful that we will be able to continue the CNRT in Donegal. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Fiona Lachlan and I'm the senior OT with the um, CNRT. Um, as Denise has just said, um, we are meeting the heads of services in the next month to discuss the progress of the CNRT to date. So it started off in April 2015 and we're now um, September 2017, so we are over the two year mark. And in the last couple of months we have got all our statistics together um, over the two years and um, um, come up with a couple of charts um, which I've put together in this presentation to see if they might be quite useful to know. Um, so in County Donegal, um, this is what our um, client profile looks like. Um, we have, um, I guess we have over, uh, almost half our stroke and um, again, about a quarter of that again is um, traumatic brain injury. So you can see from it we have about I'd say two-thirds of our client caseload are acquired brain injury of some sort. Then we have other types of conditions like Parkinson's, Huntington's disease, MS and, your, and um, then other neurological conditions. Um, we've got one or two spinal cord injury, um, people, some people with peripheral neuropathy, cerebral palsy and um, motor neuron disease. Um, Gillian Barra syndrome, all, all of those, that's, it says up there the other neurological conditions. But um, in terms of MS, I think the colour there is, is light blue, so you can see it a it's, it's a small proportion of the case though, but it's, it's definitely a significant proportion all the same. Um, our age profile, we have um, about, a, we've got about, what is that, about two, about a small, about an eighth or two eighths are, um, are 18 to 30 years of age and then um, just almost half are 31 to 50 and then we have about half of our case load 51 to 65 and uh, we don't see anyone over 65. Um, it was interesting to see the geographical area. We are based in um, Ali Buffet which is in central Donegal. Uh, in Ashone are a good proportion of our case load. Then we have the northwest which is the Port Salem Peninsula and over Valcara. Um, we have the east, which is um, Lifford, and then we have the, the south, then, which is like Killybeg, Donegal Town, Bundorn, and over as far as Glencolum Kill. So, if you can think about the ge geography of Donegal, like it's huge. And I'm not from Donegal, so I uh, really had to learn the geography of it over the past two years because I, I, as part of my role as an OT, I do a lot of, of home visits. Um, it could take an hour, two hours to get from 
uh, Valley Buffet up to Malin Head. Uh, so if you're looking at a home visit, going out to someone's house, I'd want to be spending about an hour or two hours there just to make the journey worthwhile. So that's two hours to get there, two hours back. Um, six hours round trip, you know, so it takes up almost a day to even do a home visit. Uh, the referral source um, comes from all different areas. We, most of our referrals come from the key worker. We get some referrals from our GP, um, the GPs in the area, from the SMRU, which is the Stroke and Medical Rehab Unit, uh, which is attached to the hospital. It's, um, it's a community hospital next to Louder County General Hospital, which is called St. Connell's, in that they have a Stroke and Medical Rehabilitation Unit. Uh, for, we get some referrals from Better County General Hospital, from Sligo General Hospital, from the NRH, and then from Beaumont and other, other really, it, I can't even think of where else we might get them. Um, sometimes the Matter Hospital, but like you're looking at one or two referrals, but mostly Beaumont and the NRH and Better County and Sligo. At McAlvin, oh, you, you, sometimes we get them from Matt McAlvin if people are kind of over the border. Um, they get, they get seen in Derry. Um, so the living circumstances, most people are living at home, uh, living independently or living with home support. Uh, we've got a small proportion with living in support and living. So we have 69% are at home with family support, 34% are at home with support, 3% are in supported living such as Cheshire, um, and then 6% are in full residential care, nursing homes. So now it brings me on to the opportunities. Uh, we sat down together as a team recently to come up with the opportunities. So this is, these opportunities and challenges are, are coming from our own kind of personal experience of working in the CNRT. It's not coming from any book in relation to the benefits of the CNRT or the disadvantages or anything. But first of all, we've kind of um, put them together into different categories. We've got the environmental benefits of it. Uh, we're all based in the one clinic. Um, I guess to start with, I previously came from primary care, so I, I worked for two years in the acute hospital, I've worked for five years in primary care setting, and now I'm three years in the community, within the community uh, neuro rehab team or in a physical and sensory team. And the biggest benefit that I can see from going from primary care to the CNRT is that we are all based in the one clinic. My office is right next door to Denise's and right next door to Mark's and uh, we can pop in and out to each other at any stage um, and we all learn from each other um, because we're working together in, in such close proximity we can learn from what each other's role is in more detail than previously uh, than you might have learned in primary care where you're in an office with all different OTs or all different speech therapists when you're sharing an office with um, other disciplines y you learn a lot more about their role um, access to rehabilitation, therapy rooms and equipment. So we, uh, there was an old building in Bally Buffet, an old HSC building which was previously used for admin which they converted for us. Uh, we have now a big, a, a very big fully equipped physiotherapy um, gym. Um, which is, is a shame really that, it's, it's, uh, that the post is vacant because basically the therapy room is there and only being used um, uh, maybe the odd time by myself. Uh, then we have the neuropsychologist has his own office and therapy room. I have an OT kitchen therapy room, so where I would do my cognitive assessments, and I have a kitchen there as well for um, some functional assessments. And Denise then has her <laughs> own room as well for communication assessments. We also have a large um, MDT meeting room where we do the family uh, multidisciplinary team assessments and uh, that is wheelchair accessible. In fact most of the rooms in the building are wheelchair accessible, we're all on the ground floor. Um, so you know the clinic is um, it's a, a, a excellent um, for us. Then we have the other benefits of the CNRT are MDT working. Um, us working alongside each other, doing joint sessions. Uh, I would have previously done joint sessions with the physio. Occasionally I do joint um, sessions with um, psychology and speech therapy and likewise other, the other links. Um, but also we do kind of joint groups. So myself and Dr. Mark Hogan would have done uh, a six, we did 12, a 12 week cognitive rehabilitation group 
which we run twice a year. Um, we have other kind of functional rehab groups which we run together. Um, we do health promotion uh, groups together which we run alongside each other and um, we also have back-to-back -back appointments so because people might be travelling an hour and a half to two hours to get to Bally Buffet, we want to make their trip worthwhile. So we might offer them, if their priority at the moment is speech and language therapy and occupational therapy, they would have back-to-back -back appointment with an hour for speech therapy followed by OT. They might be able to go off and have a cup of coffee for 15 minutes in between, or sometimes they might want to run um, straight through the two hours. Uh, but we do offer back-to-back -back appointments. Uh, we, it's a holistic approach to goal setting. Goals are set and prioritised across all disciplines, rather than each discipline prioritising individually. And Denise touched on that in that if their priority at the moment is speech therapy, and um, we're working on speech therapy, but we're fine, we're, we're hitting a block in that due to anxiety or other psychological issues, we can pause the therapy and then psychology might come priority. Um, or likewise, they might need to work on their physiotherapy goals before going forward with OT goals. And, and, and that is what we mean by the holistic approach. And we have access to a hospital discharge coordinator, to the key workers, which are invaluable. Um, access to MS key, key workers, which are in the same, who are in the same building as us. Um, we have strong li links with national and local rehabilitation settings. Um, the NRH are familiar with us now, and they send us on a lot of referrals. We, um, we feel that there is a good, smooth continuation of care from when they are discharged from the hospital to the community. Uh, clients are prioritised on a needs basis, um, consultation with other CHO1 services, um, and we've joint working relations with the Long Term Conditions Programme. They have approached us recently in terms of advertising our service on the website. Uh, we make referral, onward referrals to the Quality in Life Programme, it stands for Quality in Life Programme. Um, um, yeah. um, we have, oh they have identified, so we have identified some of our clients for focus groups for further research within the long term conditions program. Um, so specialised intervention, specialised assessments that are not available in the primary care team and clinic. Uh, I, my role as an OT, um, I guess it complements the role rather than it, um, I don't do the same role as a primary care OT, and therefore the role that I carry out complements the role of primary care OT, um, in that I complete all the cognitive assessments, driving assessments, vocational assessments, and also likewise Dr. Mark Hogan would have a specialist neuropsych assessments that other psychologists in the community wouldn't be able to provide. We provide episodes of intervention um, to the client, so because it's not just found that it's not just time limited rehab. We might provide a, time, a period of rehab over maybe 12 weeks, but that's to focus on a goal, a specific goal that might be related to, but then six months later another goal might appear. So we then need to be referred back into the service to deal with that. So for example, um, after a stroke, people, some people have to wait six months to a year to go back driving, and then they might not be able to go back to work until they get their driving license. Um, so the focus, the episodes of intervention will be initially on, it might be in relation to just functional independence and then six months later we'll, I'll say come back to me in six months and we'll, we'll focus on driving and then come back to me in another six months and we'll focus on going back to work. So you've got episodes of intervention there. Um, and, and, and that's also in that we've, I've made links as well with OTs working in CNRTs in the north. And what they have is called a moving on service to refer people on to. So they might have an OT, a team that provides the time limited rehab in a CNRT format over maybe 12 weeks and then they refer on to a moving on service uh, for all these other specialist assessments. But we don't have that. So our CNRT is essentially providing um, time limited rehab but also then the moving on service six months to a year later. Um, we have standardised interdisciplinary discharge reports. So if you've ever seen the discharge reports coming from the NRH, which are all um, linked together, uh, that's exactly you know, what we do as well when we are discharging clients. Uh, we have specialised home programmes. We can train um, carers to provide uh, their home therapy programmes. Um, we're developing 
new group interventions. We already have the cognitive rehab group and I also run a woodwork group um, as a, a functional rehab group. Uh, we have the development of um, specific healthcare information leaflets um, and they'd be quite specialised in terms of uh, neurological rehabilitation. And then we often present at information days and conferences. So we've presented before at an MS information day in Letterkenny and we present at various um, ABI conferences also. Um, in terms of the opportunities for staff development, uh, there's a willingness from Heads of Services to support uh, staff development. So we have been approved for funding for um, specialist training. Uh, Denise has gotten her um, swallow training and I've done my vocational rehab training, my AMPS training, and um, in, we've, we've just, uh, we're, we're doing medical legal training as well. And the, you, we just get extra funding for that anyway. There's um, specialist student placements that we offer, um, service-based research, CPD, the staff are upskilled with specialist skill set. Each profession learns from each other and becomes more knowledgeable in the roles of other disciplines, while at the same time maintaining their professional boundaries. Um, staff training programs, so we provide training to um, physical and sensory team, to the um, acquired brain injury team, to the home support providers, um, to nursing home staff and to day centres. Now we're going to chat a little bit about the challenges that we have in the CNRT. Um, I guess the obvious one is that we have limited capacity um, with us being a two-day service. Uh, when I say two-day service, it's, it's actually it's an 80, it's a 0.5, so it's 18.5 hours, but which we kind of do run over two long days or, or two and a half days. Um, the large regional spread, um, the maximum distance is about 90 minutes, a commute to the clinic for clients. Some clients with severe fatigue cannot tolerate the journey. Some clients cannot tolerate the back-to-back -back sessions. Um, domiciliary visits are very time consuming, which I mentioned. And then we just put it out there um, as a question um, to think about, is a central based service the best solution? Or should we have little services like a traveling clinic? Um, there is, as I mentioned already, there's no moving on service in the community for psychology and OT. Therefore, clients are held for longer periods for ongoing reviews. Um, and thus being a part-time service, when we're holding people on for reviews, there's less capacity to take on new clients. There's a lack of home support at the moment. Uh, the focus is currently on essential care. Uh, we feel that for our home therapy programs, we really need the, the support of the home, of, of home care support workers to complete the therapy programs at home. Um, home support, they, they require specialist training. Um, staff resources need to be secured, such as the physio, and then if we can get a physio, we'd then love to apply for a rehab assistant. And I guess, um, you know, what, what we'd be looking for to expand the service is probably endless. Uh, further development of stronger and more efficient working relationships with community agencies is required. Um, expanding the service in response to clinical need with limited funding resources for staff, rehab equipment, and specialist assessment tools. So we're constantly expanding, but we're constantly looking for new tools. I'm always asking for um, kind of more up-to-date cognitive assessments and, um, and various rehab tools to work and complete the therapy, but you know, the funding is limited and we just take our time and prioritize and maybe get one or two things now and a couple of things next year and build it up that way. Um, we would like to make uh, stronger connections with the neurology department. So we don't have a neurologist, I don't think we have a full-time neurologist in Letterkenny at the moment. A lot of our clients are going down to Dr. Murphy in Sligo. Uh, so we don't, we, we, we don't have as strong a link with the neurology, um, the medical team, as we probably would like. Uh, we also carried out research recently um, to... I suppose it was service effectiveness research where we sent out uh, a number of questionnaires to our clients. Um, we had about, we had a really good response rate. Um, we, we got back about 60 um, questionnaires. So it was a questionnaire based research. 
uh, with open-ended questions and closed questions. And the responses we got back were 83% found the rehabilitation program provided by the team to be helpful, 75% achieved their rehabilitation goals, 96% followed the advice that was given, 100% uh, would recommend the CNRT to people in similar um, challenges. Uh, some of the comments that we got back, the rehabilitation program, more physiotherapy would be a good help, more reass reassessment to ensure exercises are being done properly. Um, in relation to achieving your goals, uh, questions, the comments were, well, it's just the beginning and I need you know, to work on some more goals. I achieved a lot of my goals, but there's still more to achieve. I feel I'm improving all the time. Again, another comment about more physiotherapy was needed. Um, was expecting to go back to how I was, but I feel that that's highly unlikely now. So there's a lot of people that come into terms with their condition. Um, would you recommend the service to others? Uh, one person commented, should have CNRT as an automatic service. Um, so how could we improve the service? More follow-up to ensure that the inpatient is not left behind. It would be good to have a physiotherapist available. We're happy the way it is, not centrally located, say in Letterkenny, which isn't really central. I think Valley Buffet probably is the most central. Um, very good service, good staff, not really very good. Um, no, not really, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> not really, comma, it is very good. Um, appo appointments were sent out early and no waiting time. So that was good as well to hear that there was um, very little waiting time. How could we improve the service? The neuropsychologist is very understanding and very easy to ask questions. I found everything excellent. Um, make them, we should make ourselves more well known and that is something we need to do is to promote the service that bit more around the county and at various conferences like this. Um, more recurrent appointments, um, I don't think that they could improve the service. So final comments, people found it to be a valuable service, helped live my life to the best of my ability and move forward with what I've learned. Very happy with the people who've helped me and meetings helped enormously. I have to say from my own personal experience of working on the CNRT that I, I do think that it is something that should be mapped out around the country. I think it's an invaluable service. I think it's invaluable for your prof my professional um, development as an OT, um, the specialist assessments and skills that I've learned, um, which I would never have gotten in the primary care setting. And um, I do think, and it's part of that policy that has been mapped out in the HSE for neurological services, that it should be something that's mapped out around the country. Uh, other final comments, it's important to look at the whole service. Um, thank the service, do, did not think it applied to me, but it was extremely helpful. So some people who felt that they didn't need the service but then came along found it very beneficial. They felt that the staff had an upbeat attitude and positive encouragement and it helped them to understand what had happened to them. So that's it. My name is Michelle, I work in that at the physical and sensory team in Cavan. Can I just ask in terms of the intensity of your um, appointment schedule? I know obviously it depends on the needs of the client, but could you give a kind of an estimate as to, like currently I might see people for a six, one week block. So just an idea of just how you slot Six, your... do you mean like um, six, six yeah. weeks, once a week Once is it? a week. Yeah, so, that's, yeah, that's so what we work just towards. Just to get an idea of how you set your... It all depends on the goals of the client, but um, if they've got a lot of goals and they've, they've, they're a complex case, you, we would tend to see them over maybe 12 weeks, 12 to 14 weeks, up to 16 weeks. We're supposed to be cutting off at 16 weeks, but that's in reality not actually happening because again, if you're involved with somebody and then there's not the same service within the community, it's very difficult to discharge that. So at the minute we're holding on to people longer than that. Um, I mean, from a speech and language perspective, I mean, if I was working in primary care, I would have blocks of six to eight weeks, whereas I now can offer people ongoing sessions, um, maybe up to 12 
14 weeks and at that stage they definitely need a break from therapy but I'm able to put them off for a while and bring them back in again so at the minute we're able to do that with the numbers we have but obviously if that numbers were to increase that's where it would be different and that's exactly what's happening in primary care the numbers are so high that you have to offer these sessions and blocks I'm not too sure if that answers your question Michelle Other questions? Hi, um, my name is Katie. I work with the MS Society down in the southeast, and the HSE Consultative Forum is looking at setting up neuro rehab in the community. But one of the issues they've come up against is the is who would lead it. Like, who has a clinical lead or the financial clout to actually make sure that it happens like if you're is it the OT department takes the lead is it the physio department I know it's multidisciplinary but it needs to happen who, who kicks it off um, in Donegal that was the physical and sensory disability service where the I suppose from the financial point of view and our clinical lead within our service is Dr Mark Hogan um, and that was a personal choice on his part that he would take the clinical lead role as part of the team okay thanks um, I think any discipline can take the clinical lead and I guess it's possibly the person who's the most experienced and who and most skilled, I'd say, um, in terms of management and clinical decisions. I think in Limerick that the, the OT is actually the clinical lead, but it can be the speech therapist or the physiotherapist, you know. All right, well, thank you both very much. I would say that uh, Dr. Hogan could not have done a better job. So to, for both of you, thank you very much from the Emma Society and from everyone here. So a round of applause. Thank you very much.